In this video, I'm going to show you how to create this Polaroid photo collage effect uh, in Adobe Photoshop. Basically, you've got a picture of some guys having fun at the beach, and we put this Polaroid photo effect over the top of them. It creates a pretty cool effect. It's easy to do, so let's head over to Photoshop now and get started on making this. Basically, you get started by opening up this picture of the guys at the beach. And once you've got it open, head over to your Layers panel on the right-hand side. And down the bottom next to the trash can, just click on Create a New Layer. You'll see that layer one appears in your layers panel. Now on this layer we're going to draw in those little Polaroid photos, the shape of those that you saw back on the example. So basically you need to pick up your rectangular marquee tool from your toolbox and anywhere on the page I want you to draw in the shape of that Polaroid photo. So roughly that size. You can make it bigger and smaller later on but just get a rough size of your Polaroid for now. And once you've drawn it on, we're going to go up to the Edit menu, and we're going to get down to Fill. And we're going to fill this in black. And the way we do that is just change the contents here to black. Click OK once you've got that. Okay. After we've done that, we're going to be turning that into a brush. So we're going to go back up to the Edit menu, and we're going to go down to Define Brush Preset. It's just down past halfway. And you can give it a name if you like. I'll just call it Polaroid. And we'll click OK. Okay, you can deselect this box now by pressing Control D or going to Select and Deselect. And we're finished with layer one for the time being because we've saved that brush. So we can hit the trash can and trash that layer. So we're just back to the background layer. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is make a copy of that background layer. And the quick way to do that is pressing Control J on your keyboard. When you press Ctrl J, you'll see that layer 1 appears. I'm going to go back to the background layer here. Just click on that little thumbnail just to activate that background layer. And what we're going to do is we're going to fill this layer in white. And a quick way to do that is making sure you've got black and white colors over here. You can press the letter D if you don't have black and white colors over there. D is the shortcut to change foreground and background color to black and white. Now, the quick way to fill this in with white is just press, I think from memory, it's Control delete And you'll see that in your background layer here, that that box has turned white. And that's filled your background in with a white color. So Control delete will fill it in. After that, still clicked on this background layer, we're going to go down next to the trash can here and make another new layer. And you'll see that layer 2 appears in your layers panel. Okay, we're going to be using that shortly to draw on our brushes. We're going to go up to the top layer, which is layer 1, and just click on the thumbnail inside there to activate it. And we're going to create a clipping mask now, and it's going to reveal those um, Polaroids that we draw on the layer below it in just a moment. So to create a clipping mask on this layer, you go up to the layer panel, and there should be an option for create clipping mask here. You can press alt Control g for the shortcut. And your page will go white. That's okay. That's what we want. Okay, so we're going to go down to layer 2 now onto this little thumbnail that's checkered. It's like a checkerboard at the moment. just means there's nothing on it. It's just a transparent layer at the moment. So click on that little checkerboard in layer 2. We're going to go over to our brush tool here. Press the letter B for the shortcut. We're going to go up to our selected brushes here. I'm just going to make this a bit bigger so you can see what's going on. I'll make them into large thumbnails. In your brush panel here, right at the very bottom should be your rectangular Polaroid brush that you created a bit earlier. As I hover over my page, I can see that I've got the correct brush. I'm just going to press Control minus here a little bit to zoom out. Okay, because we will be starting off our page to draw this brush on. Now before we draw this brush on, there's a few things I want to change for this brush. So up next to here, we've got this little folder. Okay, and it opens up our brush panel. It's a little bit hard to see on my screen because my resolution is fairly small, but let's give it a go anyway. What we need to change, first of all we should be on the brush tip shape option. And down the bottom we want to change the spacing of our brushes. If we look in this preview window here to the left, as I move this slider up, you can see how much space is going to be between my brush strokes. Okay, so the more 
percentage or the higher the percentage the more space is going to be between my brush strokes and the lower that number the less space there is between my brush strokes. I want to set that spacing to roughly 110%. This may change from photo to photo but I think for this task 110% spacing is what we're after. Okay. The next thing while we're still in this box is to go down to shape dynamics and make sure that's checked and inside shape dynamics we're going to change the angle jitter so these Polaroid photos are going to be slightly angled when we scatter them across our page. You can see as I move this lever of the angle jitter in my preview box down here these shapes start moving around. We don't want much of an ang angle jitter so I'm only going to set it to 1% so each time I brush one of those Polaroids across my page they're just going to be slightly angled. Okay. If you hit the double arrows at the top now that will just close that panel off and we're pretty much ready to reveal our beach photo. Okay, So what I'm going to do is start just off to the right of my page and then click and drag straight across my page. Okay, and I'm going to do the same from the left, go across the bottom all the way to the right. Okay, If you're not happy with that you can press Alt Control Z to undo it, click back on layer 2 and try and do that again. So I'm just going to just get a little bit closer to the top now. I think I was a little bit too far away from the top. Mm, I think I need to make my brush a little bit smaller. To make your brush a little bit bigger and smaller, use the square brackets. Just need a letter P. Oops. So let's get a layer two. I'll just do this one last time. Hopefully we get it fitting on nicely now. There we go, that looks pretty good. So I'm happy with how my picture's looking so far. Okay, these Polaroid uh, little pictures, they don't really look like Polaroids yet, so it's a good idea to put a bit of a border around them. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over to Layer 2 here, and just double click on the little thumbnail. That's going to bring up my Layer Style box. From here I'm going to go down to the Stroke option, and we're going to put a stroke or a border around each of these Polaroids. First of all I'm going to change the size to 10 pixels. Oops. The position will need to be inside. Um, everything else there looks pretty good. Just the colour down the bottom, I'll just change that to white. And click OK. Okay, so that's got our stroke on. Can't see it at the moment. If we uncheck the preview box, you can see that it has put a white stroke on my pictures. Okay, we're going to be able to see that white stroke a little bit better in a sec once we add a drop shadow. So go down the left hand side here to drop shadow and we're going to put a drop shadow in. Now, there's a few things we need to change here. First of all our opacity we're going to change to 20% we're going to uncheck global lighting we're going to go down to the angle here and change it to 140 degrees we're going to go to the distance and change that to 10 pixels leave the spread as it is, the size we'll change it to about 8 pixels and that's looking pretty good now. You can start to see our white stroke and a bit of a shadow behind those Polaroids. So I'm going to click on OK. And you can see there's a bit of an ugly white border just around the edges of my page here. Okay. So what I am going to need to do, still clicked on layer 2, I'll grab my move tool. I'll make sure show transform controls is checked at the top there and I'm just going to hold down Alt and Shift and just stretch one of those corners out a little bit so it goes off the edge of the page. Oops, I missed that on that side. And when you're happy with that, just click the tick at the top of the page to approve those changes and you can see now that you've no longer got that white border around the edges of the page. That looks a little bit nicer. Um, one other thing you can do if you feel like this picture is too big or too small in the background you can go to the layer 1 which is the top layer here and you can also resize that so I'll hold alt and shift again you can see you can drag it in and drag it out my computer is a little bit laggy so it's struggling a bit to keep up but you can resize it you can even move it around so I'm just going to nudge that down a little bit and when I'm happy I'll click the tick at the top of the page to approve those changes 
Okay, so that's pretty much your finished product. One last thing I like to do to add a little bit more life to this is go over to the background layer here and so I'm going to unlock it first, hit that little padlock to unlock that layer and then I'm going to double click on this little white box to bring up my layer style box again and I'm going to put a gradient overlay on top of that white background and you can start to see that a gradient appears in the background here and the gradient I want, I want three colors okay so there's my three color gradient just there now obviously those colors are far too bright for this beachy photo so I'm going to click on this color box just here and it will allow me to change these colors okay so I can go down click on this blue box I'm going to choose a nice light blue in the middle instead of red I might choose a really light pinkish color and instead of this fluoro yellow we've got going on I'm going to tone that yellow down and just use a more pastel-y type of yellow. I'm going to click on OK. If you want you can change the um, type of gradients. So you can have radial gradients and angled gradients things like that. Oops. I'll stick with the um, linear gradient and I might just change this angle around a little bit. So it gives it a bit of a diagonal. There we go. So I'll click on OK. You can see you've got this cool gradient now going on in the background. I'll just zoom out a little bit there so we can see our finished product. That's basically it. That's how we create a Polaroid photo collage effect on the top of one of our photos. When you're done, just go to File, Save for Web, and make sure you've got it saved as a JPEG. Okay, have fun doing that.